All right, live stream video. Let's talk for just a minute about the acquittal. Uh, we're out here celebrating. Um, the Bundys will be leaving Portland soon, and they'll be heading down to Nevada. They should have been released, but they've been denied bail, even though it's a constitutional right to receive bail unless it's for a capital offense. Um, but they've been denied bail. They're heading down to Nevada. Um, we did see Ryan just a little bit ago. We'll go back down to the jail in just a little bit and say goodbye to Ammon. Well, I used to go there too. I'll do a quick. Which one? Got, oh, I think people have actually left. There's David down there. Um, so. For anybody out there who wants to say that the Bundys were acquitted because of a racial reason, I want you to study up first on a couple things. I want you to look into the charges that they were actually um, indicted for, which is the conspiracy to impede. Also, the weapons charge. The weapons charge was only allowed to stand if the conspiracy charge stood. So there's some confusion out there as to why they were released on the weapons charge. If they were not found uh, guilty of conspiring to impede officers through threats, force, and intimidation, then the weapons charges were to be dropped. That was from Judge Anna Brown. That was not the choice of the defense or the prosecution. That was the cover That was the judge's um, call on that. So the fact that they were found not guilty to all of the people who want to say that this was a racial issue, I want you to understand that the government got greedy with their charges. The government could have found them guilty on trespassing. The government may have even found them guilty if they weren't allowed to introduce adverse possession. They may have even found them guilty on uh, impeding officers from coming to work. But they didn't charge them with any of those things. They didn't charge them with terrorism. They didn't charge them with vandalism. They charged them with the conspiracy to impede officers from doing their normally assigned duties through threats, force, or intimidation. Now, for the people who sat in on the six-week trial, you would understand that the, uh, the prosecution had very little evidence to show that this was a conspiracy. For people who are angry that they were released, you have to understand they weren't released because they didn't, in fact, occupy a building. They were released because the charges that were brought against them could not be proven beyond a shadow of a doubt. The defense between Schindler and Mumford did an outstanding job. The prosecution tanked in a few areas, one of which they didn't reveal who their informants were. They didn't reveal Terry Linnell was one of their informants. All these informants had to come out through other people leaking this information, whether it was from OSP saying it on the stand or from the defense actually calling a witness to the stand and finding out for themselves, like the very last one. Um, the, the prosecution made a lot of errors and you can argue all you want that this is about white supremacy but let me tell you something I have not seen to date uh, in, in regards to some of these other protests somebody be fired upon with a with hundred rounds of, of gunfire um, I have not seen people be incarcerated for nine months in some of these other uh, protests that people are talking about how unfairly it is that they're being maced or tased and that the Bundys were set free. If you believe that, then that's because you believe the false narrative that the media is telling you about what actually happened at the refuge and what actually happened on Highway 395 on January 26th because they were not dealt with with kid gloves. They were not dealt with as white supremacists or being favored by the government. They were dealt with like national terrorists. And these people were going to a meeting to educate other people on their rights in the Constitution. They were fired upon from the first moment that their first vehicle stopped, long before Lavoie sped off. Then he was fired upon three more times before he stopped. And then he was fired upon, you see his window being broken out if you watch Shauna Cox's video. He was fired upon multiple times before they even had an opportunity to surrender. I have not seen this happen with the Native Americans. Do I want this to happen for them? Absolutely not. Do I stand with Standing Rock? Absolutely. 
just because Ammon Bundy's group was found not guilty does not mean it has anything to do with the fact that they were white. Because if it does, the federal government would not have murdered Lavoie Fenecum, pinned them down on an isolated road with no cell service and opened fire on them, potentially killing every single one of them. All of those bullets that went through those vehicles could have hit an 18-year-old white girl by white officers who were firing at her. Where is the white supremacy in that? There isn't. It doesn't exist. David Fry was denied bail for nine months on a conspiracy charge that he didn't commit. Did he occupy a building? Yes. Did he conspire to keep people from coming to work? No. And the prosecution couldn't prove that. And if you sat in on those the, the courtroom, you would understand that most of the pictures that the prosecution brought forth weren't even of the actual occupiers. See, if you weren't there, you don't know. And if you didn't sit in on the hearings, you don't know. One person on Twitter shared a picture of the red-headed, uh, red-beard man holding an AK-15 or AR-15, whatever you call it. I don't know. I'm not a gun person. And they said, these are the people that get freed while these Native Americans are being tased. Okay, first of all, it was shown to be discredited that that person was even a part of the occupation. He was actually there as a bodyguard for somebody else who came to the occupation for the day and left. He had nothing to do with the occupation itself. So the picture that you're using is false, and it's also false when the prosecution used it. And the fact that you're still using it tells me that you weren't in the hearings, that you didn't see the evidence that was presented, and had you seen the evidence, you would have realized that most of these people didn't even know each other, let alone did they have time to conspire to impede federal officers from doing their job through threats, force, or intimidation. Why did they have guns? They had guns so that they wouldn't be tased and beat up like the Native Americans are being beat up right now. That's why they had the weapons. They didn't have the weapons to intimidate anybody. They had the weapons so that the federal government wouldn't show up to the refuge and tase the hell out of them at all. So for people who want to draw a comparison saying that somehow they were released because they're white supremacists, perhaps you haven't watched much of the videos of the Native American protests because a lot of those people who are being arrested are white. They really are white. This isn't about race. This isn't about color. This is about the fact that one, Ammon Bundy had no criminal record. Two, most of the people who went with him had no criminal record. Three, he went to an isolated town 30 miles outside of Burns, occupied an empty bird refuge, not a federal facility like some of you are alluding to. Okay, a federal facility makes you think of some downtown Portland building where people are coming and going from work. We're talking about three or four federal employees who would have come to work to check in on the birds that were costing the taxpayers millions of dollars a year because they never were able to raise the money they needed to operate the bird facility. So in a way, by Ammon Bundy occupying that bird facility and aiming to get it turned back over to the people of Harney County, he was actually saving the taxpayers money had he succeeded. The taxpayers would have saved money having that land turned back over to the county of, Har of Harney County and had it removed from the federal government's possession. The federal government should not own that land. That land belongs to the sovereign state of Oregon, not to Washington, D.C. He didn't go occupy a federal facility. The other comparison I saw was that people wanted to talk about how in Portland, a couple weeks last week, um, Black Lives Matter tried to occupy the city hall. And they said when they tried to occupy it, they were pushed onto the steps and maced. And how Ammon Bundy didn't have that result when he occupied a federal facility. Let's actually dissect this for a minute. City Hall was occupied at that point by the mayor of Portland, along with many, many, many other city officials who were working that day. Do I support them going there? Absolutely. They had every right to go to where the mayor was and to challenge him on the things he was not honoring and upholding that he promised them he would do. But to compare the two and to say that they were pushed out and maced and Ammon Bundy got to occupy this federal facility with no consequence, first of all, they didn't charge in and push Ammon Bundy off the steps of the wildlife refuge because they knew that the people there were armed, which is why our founding fathers gave us a Second Amendment right to start with. For the very
very reason that occupation lasted 25 days was because of the Second Amendment right. Second of all, Ammon Bundy occupied a bird refuge, a public facility, 30 miles, 20 miles outside of Burns, Oregon. During a season, it was virtually unoccupied on a holiday weekend where nobody was even at work. That's why they didn't push him out of the facility because nobody was there to push him out of the facility. On top of that, he went personally and met with the FBI. I saw another picture of him shaking hands with the FBI. And they said, this is how the FBI treats armed occupiers that are white. And then they showed a picture of the Native Americans being mates. First of all, Ammon Bundy didn't wait for the federal government to come to him. He went to the courthouse in Burns and he asked to speak with Sheriff Ward to find out if Sheriff Ward had in fact given his authority to the federal government to bring in the FBI or not. They shook his hand. You want to know why they shook his hand? They shook his hand because he put his hand out. He put his hand out. That's why they shook his hand. And if the people at the city hall, if the people at the city hall in Portland put their hand out and shook the hands of their elected officials, even as they were storming the city hall, the elected officials probably would have shook their hands too. This isn't about race. This isn't about color. We stand with the Native Americans. We stand against the North Dakota pipeline. We stand against federal overreach of all people, and we're not looking to divide based on color. If you think that these people were acquitted because of their skin color, then you don't realize that LaVoy Finnecombe was shot three times in the back with his hands in the air. You don't realize that Ammon Bundy has spent much of the last nine months in solitary confinement, being denied every one of his rights before he was proven guilty of the charge that the federal government decided to bring against him. It was the federal government's choice because they wanted the most harsh consequence, which was the six-year sentence for impeding officers. Had they brought trespassing charges, I think he would have faced between 12 and 24 months in jail, and they didn't want that. Would they have won on trespassing charges? Probably. They likely would have. That was the federal government's choice. That wasn't Ammon Bundy's choice on what he would be indicted. It wasn't his choice on what evidence they could pull up and find on him. They couldn't find conspiracy charges because he never conspired. The judge was very clear with the jury on how they were to follow the law. The judge was very biased and against these people from day one, but she was very clear that they had to prove that Ammon Bundy conspired with at least one other person who wasn't an informant in order to find him guilty. Now let's talk about that for a minute. There were nine other informants on the refuge that the government wouldn't tell us about. One of the guns they brought forth in the court to show the jury of all these weapons these seven defendants had, one of the guns was Mark McConnell's, who was a federal informant. So that gave the defense attorneys an opportunity to say, if Mark McConnell was an informant, if these other people were informants and you're not disclosing their names, how many of these weapons here that you presented us with belong to the government informants? That created reasonable doubt in the juror's mind because the government wouldn't disclose who their informants were. Had they disclosed who their informants were, which they don't want to because they're still amongst us working their little sweet tails off to report information on whether or not we're a threat to national security, had they disclosed who those informants Informants were, the juror may have been able to conclude whether or not Ammon Bundy conspired with one other person who was not an informant to impede federal officers from doing this job. But the prosecution and the judge decided not to disclose that information. That wasn't Ammon Bundy's fault. That wasn't Ammon Bundy's fault. This had nothing to do with race. This had nothing to do with color. I'm absolutely shocked the federal government didn't buy off this jury, that they actually looked at the evidence that was given and concluded that these people are, in fact, not guilty. I'm shocked by that. Is it awesome and wonderful? Yes, but these people have not received a free pass. Do you want to know how many of the family members don't have a place to live because their spouses were held up being denied bail in federal facilities being held without even being found guilty? 
Do you want to talk about the bullet in Ryan Bundy's arm? Do you want to talk about the death of Lavoie Fenecum? Do you want to talk about the multiple bullets that hit his vehicle when they were coming to the stop? Have you seen that kind of fire be opened up on any other protesters that we are discussing about right now in the current times? None. None. None of them have received the gunfire, the ambush scene, the isolated back road with no cell service, none of them, not even Ferguson, when they were burning police vehicles, not even then did they follow the people and arrest them and find them or charge them on federal offenses. This had nothing to do with race. That has had everything to do with the prosecution, their weak evidence, the fact that Ammon Bundy never conspired to keep people from doing their jobs. His intent was to occupy a building that was empty. That was the prosecution's problem, not Ammon Bundy's. Eleven, juror eleven, I absolutely believe, believe was a plant. They tried to get juror eleven removed. Juror eleven was added to the uh, to the jury pool anyway. And then even when juror four called out juror eleven. That night, I did a live stream video stating how the judge said, I asked him if he was biased, and he said no. Therefore, this investigation is closed. How can you say this had anything to do with white supremacy or our color? This had everything to do with, it, with juror number four having some major cojones and being willing to call out juror 11, who was speaking all kinds of biased statements about these defendants. That's what this is about. Juror 4 is the one who really rose up and stood and got Juror 11 removed. Had Juror 11 not been removed, this would have been a hung jury. And we'd be going back to trial, even though 11 of the jurors would have found them all not guilty. Juror 11, who I absolutely believe was planted, works at a prison for the last 20 years. He's a part of the system, you guys. He's a part of bu abusing the American people for the last 20 years. And he worked 20 years ago from the BL for the BLM. And, and the judge actually thought that he would help make sure that this was going to be a fair trial. No. He was her wild card. He knew that if any of the other jurors thought these people were, were innocent, that juror 11 would make sure at minimum it was a hung jury. Juror number four is who saved the day on this one. God saved the day through juror number four, through telling juror number four to speak up and to let the judge know exactly what was going on. Mumford was tased at the end of this and arrested because he rightfully challenged the lack of paperwork to show that Ammon Bundy should still be held in custody. Ma Marcus Mumford was attacked by six to eight U.S. Marshals even after the judge said to stand down. Who has the authority here? Is it really even the judge? This judge is just a puppet. This judge is, she didn't sit up there with any weapons. It was the U.S. Marshals who had the weapons who tackled Mumford Marcus to the ground and then arrested him after being told to stand down. Then David Fry, who was found not guilty, tried to resist having handcuffs put on him. They shackled him and handcuffed him. They brought him to the ground. They put their knees in his back and said, this is procedure. Do you guys understand that procedure trumps the Constitution? The procedure trumps the American people right now? Do you know how sick and tired I am this year of hearing about the words procedure? Do you know that our founding fathers would have been absolutely irate to hear that procedure was trumping the American people's rights even after being found not guilty by a jury of their peers that we still handcuffed a man and brought him back to a cell, forced David Fry into his jail clothes after being found not guilty? Do you guys understand that we don't have the power, that the only power we have in this country is the guns. That's our power. If we're armed and we have multiple people with us, we have power. And if we're not, then the government has the power. They're, they're a group of thugs that abuse their rights, that, that abuse the American people, that claim to protect the blue line because at the end of the day, the blue line is nothing but a gang organization. It is a gang organization. Go watch Hillary's America. 
Go learn about the Democratic Party. Go learn about Planned Parenthood and how it was actually put into um, into works in order to exterminate the black people. And how many of the black people actually support Planned Parenthood and the Democratic Party? You guys were being so brainwashed. The Republicans are not the racists. The Republicans are standing up for the equal rights of all people, including the Native Americans in North Dakota including the African Americans who are being abused by this government and being forced into their neighborhoods that that are, they have no um, they have no education that is being presented to them. We're not pushing money into these ghettos like we should be to help train up these people so that they can have the opportunities that we want them to have. And instead, we're pumping it into refugees of other nations who want to come and take over our country. You guys, wake up. Trolls, wake up. You're a part of the problem. Stop being a part of the absolute destruction of the American people. Protect the veterans, protect the blacks, protect the low income. Protect the people of America before you protect every other country. Stand up against a president who could care less about the prosperity of America. Unite with people who take pride in the American flag and what our founding fathers did. That's who Ammon and Ryan have been. That's who the Bundys are. They take pride in this nation. They take pride in the American people. They take pride in our freedoms and our rights and our founding fathers. They see that all men have been created equal, endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights. And among those are life, liberty, and property. People unite, get the federal government out of our lives, away from our liberty and away from our property, and then we'll see some change. Let's get the federal government back to Washington, D.C., back to forts, ports, and 10 square miles where they belong. They don't belong at a 200,000-acre bird refuge in Burns, Oregon. They don't. Harney County is very well equipped to handle a 200-acre bird refuge in Burns, Oregon, and we do not need Washington, D.C. dictating what goes on on that land. Give the land back to Oregon. They want to leave it a bird refuge, let them leave it a bird refuge. Ammon Bundy doesn't care. He just wants the people to decide. It's the people are the ones who are supposed to have a voice so at the end of the day please you guys speak up for these patriots speak up and let them know the abuse they've encountered the solitary confinement the shots fired the ambush the murder let them know the truth of what's happening because if anything the only reason they were not all obliterated out at the refuge is because they were armed that's why so stand up for them, stand up for your neighbors, stand up for your rights, support the people who are willing to stand up for the American people. Ammon Bundy, I want to say, is probably one of the most misunderstood people in America right now. And it's an absolute shame what the Democratic Party is doing to further that narrative and what the media is doing, what Maxine is doing, what Conrad with OPB is doing. It's a shame. It's a disgrace. It's a, they should be in jail, honestly, for the lies that they've told the American people. Those people should be in jail. Blood is on their hands. And the only way it's going to happen is if the people unite and start saying to them, no more. No more. So that's all for now. I just wanted to do that quick update. Um, we're out celebrating um, with David Fry. We anticipate Tuesday the Patriots will be moved down to Nevada. Um, lots of great stuff happening down there, pushing for their pretrial release, of course, since they should be offered bail. And go Google sex offenders and see how many sex offenders are in your neighborhood right now who were granted bail. And tell me why Emin Bundy is still sitting in jail, why um, Greg Burleson is sitting in jail, why Ryan Payne, why all of them are still sitting in jail. It makes absolutely no sense unless you're a tyrannical government. So um, speak up, stand up, stay tuned. We'll keep doing more updates. Um, we're gonna be traveling to Nevada soon. We're not gonna let this go. We're gonna make sure everybody's found not guilty. And then we're gonna get into government, into um, Congress, and make sure that we get this country turned around. Because if you think that this is the nation I'm gonna leave for my children, you are wrong. I'm not paid, I'm a proud American. I have a heart for the people. Don't try to put me in one of your boxes. You're not going to figure me out if you involve money in the matter because this is about heart. 
This is about uh, being a proud American. This is about fighting for liberties and freedom. And whether I'm the last person doing it, I will keep standing. I will keep fighting. And um, I believe that we will see uh, a great victory from the Lord at the end of all of this. So don't give up, guys, and uh, let's keep correcting the narrative. Thanks, and God bless.